Hey everyone, Rushlock here, and as always, if you want the latest news, tips, and tricks for EVE Online, hit the subscribe button down below the video. So today we have an INN post by Creo Hiran. I apologize in advance if I'm butchering the name, but it's titled, Do CCP Care? They Do If You're New. So it starts off with a very recognizable uh, quote from CCP Paragon going around lately, especially after FanFest. And yes, um, we are announcing big content updates for FanFest. It's the largest one probably we have ever done. Uh, I was there when the uh, Q&A was happening. I uh, remember the excitement and the buzz for it. And it was kind of like the, the banner uh, going into FanFest and coming out of it for very different reasons. Let's get into the article here. Uh, Creo says, Two weeks ago, we were treated to a Q&A session with CCP Paragon, who decided to do an impromptu session due to the outrage being felt at the subscription price increase. Not something that happens regularly at all. Many questions were asked. One that many people wanted to answer an answer to. Content. Where is it? Are we getting any? As many of you reading this are aware, the last couple of years have been extremely dry in terms of content other than database number changes. New systems, overhauls, updates, or anything that may introduce some emergent gameplay has been sorely lacking. We have had systems such as DBS and ESS, but we will come to understand these systems simply don't work as intended. Engagement is simply not there, and the DBS actively reduces content, but I digress. A lesson in managing expectations. Expectations were set very high by this Q&A, with a CCP employee suggesting that we should be excited. Hopes were raised. Understandably. We all have a passion for EVE Online. It's a unique, niche game that requires substantial levels of input to play at a respectable level. There is a, re there is a reason when something is not as expected, or that CCP fails to live up to their end of a bargain, that people get very, very unhappy. We love EVE Online. We have a passion for EVE Online. For many of us, EVE has been a companion, a social tool, a co and coping mechanism for many, many years, especially during the last few. Inherently, we become more attached to something than... Oh, sorry. Inherently, we become more attached to something the longer we do it, and we are attached to something when we are attached to something, it is difficult to watch and become d demonstrably worse. Yeah, this is what we have been doing for years now. So a couple of things to break down in this paragraph are, uh, having listened to the, to the q and A, I I didn't hear anything to be excited about. Paragon seemed to be really trying to push down expectations, other than that one line of, wait for FanFest, possibly biggest update ever being announced. Uh, I guess in some ways he didn't say when that content would ever hit the... the the live server for TQ, but uh, that was definitely the buoy for like, guys, there's no nothing I can tell you right now that's going to justify the cost increase. Nothing in terms of uh, consumer value perception. But wait for FanFest, and then it'll it'll be more clear, is, is what I took away from it. Um, yeah, but the other thing that stood out to me in this one was talking about how EVE requires uh, substantial levels of input to play at a respectable level. I'm not sure what they mean by this. Is it, when I say respectable level, respected by whom? By CCP? By the Imperium? By the author? I don't know. Sometimes I get a little leery about this kind of language when uh, Party A decides that, you know, Party B's way of enjoying EVE Online isn't quote-unquote valid. That may not be in any way what they meant in this statement, but it's just something that stood out to me. Let's get back to the article. Like many of you, I was very excited as the fan fest began but that excitement started to wane during the keynote. I kept hope, started to speak to people. I reached out on Twitter and was reassured that more was coming. And while that certainly was true, the more still didn't feel like it was enough. The problem you see, dear Capsuleers, is that CCP didn't bring up much. The last few years have been a sore spot for a lot of players, many of whom were sat in the room and we got our four minutes of what can barely be called justification. FanFest was essentially a fresh start for them. I imagine this was driven by marketing. Let's not mention the problems of the last few years very much and look forward. A great idea in most instances, but in this one, it was terrible. So the presentation for me was a lot of looking backward, which I, they kind of describe in here, and you know, not, not delivering a whole lot of things to look forward to. I'd say the keynote was scheduled for an hour and a half, ran closer to two hours, Seems like about 45 minutes of looking backward, maybe about 30 minutes of what's been happening recently, and about 15 minutes of what to look forward to in the future. Um, 
yeah, I mean, that's kind of my, my view on the keynote, I, I suppose. Let's look on to context means a lot. For CCP to use the term strong foundations after the last few years cuts deep. Eve is demonstrably not in a healthier place right now than it was previously. That's going to be a huge perspective uh, nuance there. The health of EVE Online is determined by one thing and one thing alone. Oh no, here it comes. The number of players playing the game. There is no other metric by which you can ascertain the health of the game. Other metrics such as churn and retention can help inform the player counts, but the overall player count is the apex in terms of how healthy EVE Online is. That number is in decline. So, with the push against botting and with scarcity changes for game balance for the economy, I... I, I 100% agree we've seen a decrease in number of accounts logging in. But if someone tells you that this is the healthy phase of the game because player count was up, they're a fool. I, I, I don't know how to more, over more simplify that for them. Uh, that is categorically wrong for it being the only metric that matters. It is, a, is it an important metric? Absolutely. Is it a top priority metric? Again, yes, especially for terms of growth and seeing more resources gathered for the product to continue development, but to put it on a pedestal as the only thing that matters, terribly, terribly misinforming. Uh, let's move on. From CCP's perspective, they have a, de have a desire to create a system where people are unable to achieve what they previously did. Absolutely. What they were achieving previously was garbage. And, and we'll get to it later in the article, but it was a carrot on a stick to make CCP money, period. They see the reduction in minerals being mined as a success, because it is. And I think this is one of the hardest things to come to terms with as a player because most players are ignorant. And this is what, you know, uh, CCP is not going to tell you this. Your alliance isn't going to tell you this. Imperium is not going to tell you this. The author of this article isn't going to tell you this. Most players in EVE Online and MMOs in general are ignorant of any big picture concepts because why wouldn't they be? They log in to relax and have a good time. They log in to pop on the comms and talk to people. They log in for an important strategic op. It's going to be high stress, high engagement, high octane type of action. That's what they're looking for. They're not looking to comprehend the micro or macro economics and sociological uh, aspects of, of player behavior. That's not something that's on their wheelhouse or on their minds. Uh, let's go back to the article here. Most players who understand EVE, most players don't understand EVE, but they, 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 they specify and quantify this, who understand EVE see that the more or mine the cheaper ships become. Then people become more likely to go out and blow them up. This is a, a, a mostly accurate, if not oversimplification statement, right? Um, yes, the, the more you trivialize resources in the game, the more people are willing to, make, to have losses. But trivializing the material in the loss doesn't lead to a meaningful game interaction. Someone goes out and loses a, a cruiser because it costs them, you know, $8 million to fit up and, and get out there with. They don't care if they're making 60 mil an hour. It becomes irrelevant. But content rush, people are undocking. There's content. There is. But there's content they don't care about. And if people don't care, that's apathy. And apathy is worse, possibly, in some cases, than stagnation. On the treadmill, a design concept that other games use exists called a content treadmill. Games attempt to make sure the content treadmill is not all bunched up at the beginning. CCP is, rightly, trying to space out this treadmill, but they are putting this treadmill for new players above and beyond anything for their oldest and most loyal customers. Oh god, can you guys smell the entitlement coming? It's right around the corner. And this, my dear Capsuleer friends, is the biggest problem we have. How do you balance a game that involves someone with 19 years of accumulated resources with someone who started yesterday? The truth is, you can't. In a lot of ways, that's true. What are you going to do for stockpiles, right? CCP has spent the past few years systematically taking apart player systems and content generators, that's a generous term, content generator, in order to achieve a quote-unquote healthy EVE Online. Again, healthy to the most long-standing players of EVE Online means more bums in seats, more players in space, and more content. Well, yeah, because most people are ignorant. We, we covered that already. To CCP, this means reducing the overall capacity of older players and alliances in terms of production and hardware generation. Why? Because older players have more disadvantages than new players for CCP, as I will come to explain. Rorquals are another great example of this outside of CCP using them to increase their profits. That's the huge thing. Let's get into it. The reign of the Rorqual. Rorquals were overhauled to become the premier in-game mining platform, able to chew through rocks like nothing before it, and that is exactly what they did. 
but while players were warning CCP of this, and obviously using it to, it, it to good effect, CCP was using Rook Walls in order to improve their yearly profits via skill injectors. CCP showed record profits around this time, and as we later came to find out, CCP was looking for a buyer. So this is, this is true, and the part that stands out to me here is this part. But while players were warning CCP of this, let's not pretend for a moment that some kind of majority of players were doing that, right? Did some players? Absolutely. Some people were able to look at it and go, you know what? This is dangerous. This is, this is a bad direction to be moving in. Uh, but as, as we say that, we're of course going to leverage it and utilize it for our own personal gain. But heads up, CCP. This is, uh, this is, this is too much for, for how long it's going to be. We don't know yet at this time when it first happened. But the, the idea that like we warned you, we, we spoke out against it oh, in general. No, you did not. The overwhelming majority of Workwall users did not go, Oh, guys, CCP, please don't do this. This is terrible. No, they went out there and went hoovering up some rocks because they were worried about their own balance sheet, the same as CCP. This is the glass house scenario. This is somebody accusing CCP of doing something while they themselves did it and had no problem with it. Um, it doesn't uh, absolve CCP of doing it, right? Everything else stated here is absolutely correct. It was done to increase revenue to look better for a buyer. 100% true. But the, let's not get too hypocritical in, in pretending that uh, other individuals didn't also benefit from it and didn't complain that much about it. With their financial goals somewhat achieved, CCP has done now done an about-face on Rorquals and nerfed them, blaming all in-game financial and systemic woes of EVE Online on the proliferation that they, they themselves pushed for financial gain. 100% true. Uh, but with, but what, which type of capsuleer is most likely to buy a skill injector? A relatively new pilot wanting to get into a shiny new ship today, or a 10-year-old player that has already skilled in most meta ships. Obviously the new player. I, I agree with that. The new player development cycle. CCP has been, I'm uh, sorry, has spent the last two years working on the NPE. The NPE consumed the most of their development bandwidth. I don't know. Uh, some of the uh, faucet tuning also took development bandwidth, and, and uh, but I can't claim to have inside view or knowledge of, of dev time dedicated to it. We know there's at least two teams working on the NPE. Uh, one team specifically designing it, and obviously other teams are involved in terms of art assets and, and other parts that have to be uh, affected by or, or have input for. But as far as I'm aware, there's only one team dedicated to the NPE. Uh, let's see, in terms of production output and viewable progress in game, the last two years have been extremely slow and stagnant with only a brief NPE in place and a further addition coming shortly afterward. So, what has CCP been doing during that time? Again, insight into how CCP works is key here, but the most concise way of explaining it is, a, is perpetual tool production. A developer starts creating a tool. Development halts because of a problem, so they create another tool to fix that problem. But wait, this new tool also has a problem and they make two new tools to fix this problem. Perpetual tool creation is an issue that faces a lot of developments, and CCP is no different. During these two years, we have seen concurrent numbers drop, and we have seen the number of ships that are produced drop. We have seen capital ships produced drop. Every metric regarding player interaction or content generation has seen a marked decline. One thing to stand... Like, a lot of this is accurate, right? This is, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with a lot of these parts here. We have seen, a, seen capital ships produced drop. The reason for that? Players. War broke out. Production spiked. Then CCP said, hey, we're going to make it harder to make capitals. So production spiked again. What did players do? They created a massive stockpile. And then removed any demand. By both not fighting and engaging in the war. And then by the war ending. And CCP kept the, you know, the, the changes in place for making capital production harder. They've you know, recently been pushing in the opposite direction, but that's more of a newer development that we haven't seen the full uh, results from yet. But what about the future? Well, dear Capsuleers, and this is where it gets depressing, FanFest was a process of explaining aspirational future developments with very little created. But there were many undertones if you know where to look. This is absolutely true, by the way. That, that first statement there, that first paragraph. One single line from Hilmar's set was the biggest indicator. 57% of players have joined the game since the last FanFest, four years ago. The NPE was the largest topic brought up by devs through multiple uh, sets. CCP has spent the last two years primarily focused on new players and retention. 
All of that is true and all of that is good. And we're going to get into the way data is presented uh, in just a moment, but let's keep going. Retention is great, but what isn't great is that CCP has made a cost-benefit analysis of veteran players versus new players, and they picked new players. This is exemplified by the above, certainly. It also fits that there is no new content for the main zones of veteran players, namely Nullsec. All right, this whole section just took a nosedive. <laughs> Retention is great, true. But what isn't great is that CCP has made a cost-benefit analysis of veteran players versus new players, and they picked the new players. This is... I guess bias would be the word to use. Like, I guess if you're if you're not interested in new players and you live inside a fishbowl and only care about things that affect you directly, sure, right? Like, look at this one. Main zones of veteran players, namely Nullsec. Does it, well, obviously they do. Who believes that Nullsec players are the main zone of veteran players? Who, who thinks that Nullsec is, is, fits that criteria? People who live in Nullsec. Where do most quote unquote veteran players actually live? The true end game, high sec, right? But that isn't sexy and spicy and PvP oriented, so someone who has a narrative to push is going to tell you that it's wrong. Uh, they picked new players. Of course they did. Why wouldn't they? Okay, imagine for a moment that you run a business and you're looking for whatever reason, whether it's common sense or desperate need, somewhere in between, you need to increase revenue. Are you going to focus your efforts and resources on, on acquiring and, and monetizing new users? Or are you going to say, you know what? These other people have stuck by me thick and thin, and they've given me a lot of money in the past. I need to, I need to do right by them first. That's, who, that's where my loyalty lies. Of course not. You're going to cash in on the people who are making you more money now. That's just common sense. And pretending that there's like a, a false victim narrative here is, is just bizarre. Uh, let's see, this statement up here also plays into this, but I think this, this paragraph here also will talk about it. Uh, yes, all right, so, the conundrum going forward. Now, I imagine some people are scratching their heads at this point. Why would CCP want to bring in one new player with one account? A veteran might be playing with an average of five accounts. That's a fairly easy question to answer. They want to retain that new player. They want that new player to buy skill injectors and become invested, then buy alts, and inject those accounts too. A veteran already has the alts trained up, mostly. CCP knows this. CCP sees this. We have a real problem on our hands here. When it comes down to it, CCP will pick a new player over a dedicated long-term player term loyal customer. This was avidly on display during FanFest. CCP was almost gloating over having a majority of its player base be new players. And that came in front of an audience that included some of the oldest and most loyal community members. This is a great example. And I'm glad they touched on this, and we can we can break it down a bit more here. So this part, roughly accurate. Sure, I, I would agree for the most part. Here, when I watched FanFest and saw Hilmar give this presentation and throw this slide up, the initial take for me was exactly the same as what they're describing in this, in this article. Uh, our, the majority of our players, the slight majority, have joined since the last FanFest. Now, some people will look at that and go, so your player count has dropped so far that your new players now outnumber your, your long-term players. In reality, we had COVID hits and new player numbers spiked through the roof. They gained more players in early 2020, I believe it was, yeah, than like the last X number of years combined because people were in lockdown, people were at home. All right, well, I need something to do. I've always heard about Eve, let's go take a look at it. That's why that number is spiked in that direction for the most part. Are there other factors other, and other, other impact sources? Of course. But if you're already pissed off, you're going to do the same thing I did. I, I did the same thing. and went, oh, God, they've really lost that many players? Holy crap. No, they've just acquired that many new players. Now, 63% of CCP employees globally joined after the last fan fest. Oh, my God. The, the, over, the turnover inside CCP is incredible. It must be massive. Now, they did. They did lose a lot of people to the Pearl Abyss purchase. Not because Pearl Abyss purchased them, but because CCP was looking to sell. The entire community team, gone. Other layoffs, other, other you know people jumping ship when they realized what the direction things were going in. Th there was turnover at that time. CCP has also hired up a lot of people since. Uh, the reason for that, when you're looking to sell your company, you want your books to look good. You want your expenses low and your, and your, and your sales high. And... Like it, hate it, don't understand it, fully grasp it. It's still the reality of the situation. 
So in a similar way to where this is also misleading, this can be misleading as well. In reality, they employ more people now than they did at the last fan fest. Was there definitely, you know, turnover and then, and then rehiring of talent? Absolutely. But again, it's all about presentation. There was no context. Hilmar is presenting to a room of people and to, in my case, a Twitch stream of already invested and engaged users who are going to see this information and go, oh, it must be something negative. Why is this clown telling me that it's something good? CCP undoubtedly has its job cut out for itself, but so do we as its paying, playing community. The next few years are going to be difficult. That is for sure. We're going to lose many long-standing members of our community. It will be a huge shame to see these people leave. It will rend communities and make the game poor, a poorer place for having lost some great people. Will CCP management care? No, they're counting on it. So we've talked about this on stream a lot recently where, and this is one of the reasons I wanted to do this video and cover this article, there's a, a degree of correctness. CCP is not actively trying to push out veteran players and get rid of them. It is a byproduct of their refocusing on acquisition, retention, and as described in this article, new monetization systems that this new audience is predispossessed uh, of, of interacting with. They're pre-trained on interacting with more modern monetization systems. And it goes back to, we don't have to like it. It's ideal if you understand it. And will some people say, you know what? It's no longer the game that you know I recognize. It's time for me to move on. Absolutely. Um, but but there's a there seems to be a discrepancy on understanding an active push in a direction and a byproduct of, of just actual change. Uh, let's see. Addendum, please be aware by CCP, I mean middle upper management rather than ground floor developers. Yeah, developers. God, this is huge. Absolutely huge. I'm glad I just now noticed this. So much crap gets flung at developers that have nothing to do with them whatsoever, especially business decisions. If you think a developer had anything to do with the price increase, you're probably out of your mind. I, we can't oversimplify for that for you at all. Uh, developers have nothing to do with the business side of things. More often than not, sure you'll find examples of uh, something contrary. That's because you want to, not because it's actually relevant. But yeah, we've talked about this a lot recently. And, and that change and that push toward a new generation of players is going to continue and is going to be to the long-term benefit of, of EVE Online. Will that future EVE Online be the one that people recognize from 10, 15, 20 years ago? Of course not. Is there any reasonable expectation that it should? Not one bit. And the weirdest part to me in all of this was the veteran talking about how it's it's painful or, or challenging as a veteran player to be less valued than the next player. Why on earth would you value your past dollars contribute towards EVE Online more than your future dollars? And then hopefully more obviously, why would CCP? Why would any company look at how much money someone's given them in the past and go, you know what? I owe them something now. It just seems strange to me. For those with a stronger basis in entitlements and, and, and I guess maybe more narrow perspective, it probably makes more sense to them. But to me, it just seems odd. Tell me what you think. Leave a comment down below. I will put a link to this article in the video description. And uh, you guys go over there. Give the article a read for yourself. And we'll see you next time.